All right, we're on the record now. The state of Michigan versus Kimberly Walls. Also, Kimberly Kajonan, 231923. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning. Good morning. I'm John Goldfall, P30758, uh, on behalf of Ms. Wall. Ms. Wall was placed with your name on the record. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, please state your name for the record. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all right, well, this matter was scheduled for an exam on September 7th. Your client failed to appear for that exam despite having a Wayne County jail tether. And she had posted, or somebody had posted for her on the 5th, uh, $2,500, which is the $25,000 tens of cent bond that's quarter to order. And that was the fastest tether that was apparently ever um, provided because she was out before her September 7th date. And in fact, um, she was at a home that's not even in her history of addresses. So when were you uh, picked up and arrested, ma'am? Um, I was arrested um, in the car with my mom. When? Um, yesterday. Okay. I, the reason that I missed court was I didn't have a ride. My mom was in Vegas and I didn't have a ride. And I understood that what was, I understood what was going on the seventh that I was being bond over. So it's not like, I'm sorry. Were you intending on waiving your exam? No. Well, then how do you know you're going to be bound over? This court did because that's what my when my attorney spoke with me. That's what he said that I was going to be bond. That that's what the that court date would be is bond over. You know, so it's not like I was trying to run from a sentencing or something. Is all I was saying. Okay, well, I will say that that doesn't really make it any better. No, it doesn't. You're on and so how, how did you how did you get to the home in Detroit after you were released from jail, ma'am? How'd you get there? From my aunt. Okay, so why didn't you have your aunt bring you down to wind up for your court date? She because she got sick. And so you didn't know how to contact the court? Um no. Um, I failed to contact the court. Yes, you failed to contact the court. Did you? I didn't mess up my, my my tether though. You did? I did not. I think she's saying, Your Honor, that she didn't tamper with the tether. Okay. I, I, well, that's I, good. That would be a whole other charge. So. I agree, Your Honor. And yes. When she kept saying bond, bound over, I believe, as she indicated, that her attorney, uh, attorney, attorney was had discussion with her and was advising her that at the exam date, they were going to wait. That's my own, in discussing that matter with her previously. Okay. Well, um, based upon, it, it, well, and even then, man, you still haven't even contacted the court. You're only here because you were arrested yesterday because this court issued a warrant for your arrest. Well, I was sent a paper saying that I had 23 days to turn myself in. So that your bond wouldn't be forfeited because this court ordered your bond to be forfeited and then we're required to give you 28 days for you to turn yourself in so the bond isn't forfeited. And so were you going to wait until the last day? No, I was just trying to get things in order. What was your plan? Because you clearly didn't get contact the court. You could, please let me finish. You okay. didn't contact the court. You didn't stop in here. Where were you arrested at, ma'am? What city? Um, um, Lincoln Park, I think. Okay, so you were close by and you still didn't even stop into the court. Well, my mom was home from Vegas then. What? My mom was home. My mom wasn't home from, my mom was in Vegas on the 7th. So that's why I didn't have a ride. Then she I'm was home. About I'm talking about yesterday, ma'am. Or yes. any time between the time your mom got home from Vegas and yesterday. 
Okay. Did not at any point contact the court at all or come into court to handle your matter. And I'm going to presume that your attorney is going to try to argue to reduce your bond. I don't even know where your client is living. Is she living in Monroe or is she living in Detroit? Where is she living? Monroe. Monroe. So whose home was in Detroit that you were at? I know you said your aunt picked you up. Whose home is that? Um, it was right by that hill, and it was a friend's house. I'm sorry, what? You're breaking up. It was a friend's house. It was right when I got out of jail. Well, good. That friend couldn't have brought you down here? So, I mean, well, I was supposed to be staying in Monroe. Yeah, you were in Detroit. I'm sorry. What was that, ma'am? <clears throat> You're saying that you were supposed to have been in Detroit, in Monroe, but yet you were in Detroit. Yeah, when I first got out of jail. Ma'am, if you were to test what's in your system. If what? If you were to test what is in your system. Methadone, um, PHC. Do you have for either one of those, Yeah, um, I do go to the methadone clinic, but I don't for the THC. Okay, counsel. Your Honor, I believe that under circumstances, uh, she knew she had to get here. Uh, unfortunately, she did not have a means of getting here. Even more unfortunately, she did contact her uh, attorney with respect to that to make some appeal to for an adjournment. Uh, I can only say, Your Honor, that it was not the best choice she's ever made. She's ever made, and we asked the time be reinstated uh, with, of course, a. I think that, I can appreciate your advocacy for your client, but the teller didn't, the teller had zero impact on whether or not your client was going to appear in court. The court, there was a $25,000, 10% bond with the teller. That didn't matter to her. She didn't show up to court and it's been over, it's been two and a half weeks and she still didn't show up in court. The only reason we're here is because fortunately somebody got pulled over by the police and here she is. And unfortunately, or fortunately, it was her mother who was out of town. I'm not, I'm not being facetious. And now, because she was out of town, wasn't able to get her to the court last court, she could have made a lot more effort. I do agree with that, John. Yes. She Ma'am, how old are you? 46. So I would presume that you have some other resources other than your mother to transport you places, ma'am. Not really. Uh, well, you have your aunt, you have some friends that you stay with, so you need to utilize those resources. And okay. how are you supporting yourself? Um, so disability. Okay, and so you couldn't, you can't Uber? When do you I, receive I, your checks? On the, on the third. On the third. So you had just received your check Four days prior to your court date, so you absolutely could have Ubered, ma'am. I had I hadn't received my check yet. It's directly deposited, is it not? From be being in, in jail, I had to re get it re-established and everything. She was so she was arrested on the third on the th the second. So she would have had a deposit on August third. Correct. And so I'm not sure what she's saying that she would have had to reinstate anything because then there is another one for September third. And you don't generally have to reinstate anything regarding your disability from one month to the to the next. So Ms. Walls, I don't know what I'm sorry? 
If you're in jail, you do. And so when were you supposed to have done that? Before, when I was in jail, before I got out on the, um, the first. Well, based upon the defendant's failure to appear, despite having a bond posted, despite having a tether, the court is not going to reinstate her bond. The court is going to indicate $50,000, 10% bond. GPS tether, house arrest. In the event somebody's posting $5,000 for you, at least we will know where you're at. And we're setting the and we're setting the court the exam date for October fifth. Okay. One thirty p.m. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Have a good day. Off the record.